Season two of Book Rescue just wrapped up over on the main channel. By the way, if you're not subscribed to the main channel, what you doing with your life, go over to dalelinks.com slash YouTube and all that aside. If you're not familiar with Book Rescue, essentially what we do is we reach into the indie author community and offer a helping hand. And uh, the only thing that we ask is if they're comfortable with being on you know, video and sharing all of their journey throughout the whole process. So season two had cozy paranormal mystery author Sarah Walde and Sarah is just a spectacular woman an absolute uh, she's just bubbling with enthusiasm positivity uh, just someone you just love to have around so when we were going and looking through applications for book rescue season two uh, Sarah just she just jumped off the page to us. And when we got in touch with her and got with her on a video chat, discovered real fast, like, oh, this one is the one. We want to work with her because she's just so amazing. And rather than me gushing about it, we're going to go into a full interview and talk about some of the process of working in book rescue, uh, of developing a backlog of books, about 13 plus books. And uh, actually it's grown since then. And the funny part about this interview was, we had finished filming Book Rescue Season 2 mid-June, and then about a week after that is when we went ahead and did this video. Um, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the interview with Sarah Walday from Book Rescue Season 2. Sarah, the dust has settled with Book Rescue. How are you feeling? Oh, dusty. <laughs> no. <laughs> dusty. <laughs> Excited. Um I don't know. This whole thing has been like a thrill ride and now I'm kind of settling back into normal, but it's not, it's a new normal in a good way. <laughs> not like before. It's yeah. exciting. So I why do you really, say that? Why do I say that it's a new normal? Yeah. I, yeah. I have um, more resources at my fingertips that I can pull from my mind. Like I have um, my creativity has been sparked in every area of writing, marketing, um, how to reach out to my, uh, my, my readership, how to reach out to other writers. I am full of ideas and I cannot keep up with journaling them. I'm full of ideas and I don't know, I'm full of hope. I'm full of hope and I'm just excited to get, it's, it's almost like, um, I don't know if this was the case with you, but I, when I was engaged to my husband, I couldn't wait to get married to start my real life. Right. And now it feels yeah. like my real writing life has finally started and I just can't wait to keep living it. You mean you finally got married to your books, to my books, <laughs> yeah, to my career. Well, like I stopped thinking of myself as just a mom who writes and started thinking of myself as an author who can succeed and can reach people. And that's exciting. <laughs> you know, I, I think let's let's take a couple steps back because you saw a, a <laughs> An incredible amount of success and I will tell you the same thing that I've said since day one is you you honestly really didn't need book rescue because if I feel like it was not a case of if it was a case of when <laughs> that you would succeed and I think that you're definitely on the right path but um, let's take a step back though like what got you into actually like hit sitting down and writing because you're very prolific you've got over a dozen publications <laughs> I can't believe you used that word. That makes me feel even <laughs> prolific. I'm like, who? I'm prolific. Because um, <laughs> I don't consider myself yeah. prolific. But um, mm -hmm. I started writing. Uh, I actually went, I'm a homeschool mom. And I went to a homeschool conference. And there was an extra conference at the end for people who were interested in blogging, becoming a homeschool blogger. And I was like, ah, okay. I'll go check that out. So I went and checked it out. And I started a blog. And starting in my blog reminded me of how much I like writing. So I jumped into writing a book, a very, very short book, because I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I wrote it and it was like a love story to my homeschooling family. And um, it was about special needs and all these situations and stuff like that. And then I watched YouTube, like some channels you might know <laughs> on how to Go publish ahead, name it. Drop. Uh, yeah, good name drop. Self-publishing with Deal. I was watching okay. him, uh, well, you, and then I... I watched somebody else. I don't remember who they were because they only had one video and their video recommended your channel. And that's how I found you. So, um, Ooh. yeah, I don't even remember who they were. They were somebody from Japan and they made a comic book 
and they recommended your channel. So I went over and that's oh, how I found you. Oh, yes. Something in Tokyo was the name of that, that YouTube channel. Yes. I remember the yes. day that she actually pulled the plug, I was bummed, like big time. She, it was like, she's like, yeah, I'm not doing YouTube anymore. And she just right. walked away from it. Like, Texan right. in Tokyo. That's the name of the Yes, of that's the it. That's it. Exactly. Yep, that's it. So she name dropped and that's how I found you. And I was like, I can do this. I can figure out, I mean, I learned how to put a blog together and it's semi-decent. I could probably self-publish and I self-published. And right after I did that, I'm like, I'm going to write a novel. And I did. <laughs> wow. I tackled you it at NaNoWriMo. How, okay. So you did it all in the course of NaNoWriMo. You wrote yeah. that entire book. How long did it take before you were able to launch that then? A year. Because I didn't okay. feel like it was okay. And I made huge mistakes huge mistakes with hmm. that book Explain. I actually had um well first of all <laughs> let me give you some <laughs> advice everybody who might be new to this <laughs> once you publish your book um go read it <laughs> because I published my rough draft and not my beautifully edited copy <laughs> oh my gosh I feel that on on like a, a deep soul level right there just aches like that yes. has to like you probably like your face ran flush did anybody buy it or download it yes yes i had um from all my friends got it <laughs> they don't buy yeah. my books as much anymore and i know why um <laughs> no, I, yeah. <laughs> but um yes and i actually had a group of friends homeschool moms who got bought it for book club and they had me come to book club and one of them very kindly took me inside and said who's your editor and I'm like, well, you know, I go through, I go through Fiverr, I do this and this and this, and my mom has helped me and I've had this person help me and all that kind of stuff. And she's like, you might want to consider giving it another look. And instead, this is how puffed up I was, instead of going, oh yeah, let me go do that. She's probably right. I was like, who are you? Like a complete jerk. And went she home doesn't and, know anything. <laughs> yeah. I went home and I like was in tears because I'm like, she didn't like my book and I did my best. Okay flash forward like two more weeks and I'm like okay get over yourself look at it it was horrible it was horrible there were still notes to myself in it Theo <laughs> notes to myself in it saying oh, hey man. make sure you move this to this chapter make sure you move this to this chapter so um I pulled it and I got a new cover for it and I retitled it and I put it back out uh, the real the good version so Anybody who's not published yet and are going to publish, when you hit publish, get yourself a cup of coffee when it comes live and read that live thing right away. <laughs> that was horrible. Horrible. Yep. Horrible. Always proof. Oh. Always oh proof your work for sure. Here's a little bit of a hack. Maybe uh, this is just a recommendation to you would be, um, you know, obviously we go through different versions of mm -hmm. our manuscript at some point or another, but inevitably what I try to do is my first draft, I put in all caps, like the actual Ooh, title clever. for it. So it stands okay. out inside my thing. Yeah. And then the final draft I put in, in all caps, yeah. uh, in the event that that final draft ends up becoming another final, final draft. Uh, mm -hmm. I just turn the caps off and I go and put it into the, the caps on the new one. So that right. way my eye kind of goes to it automatically. I know where I started and I know where I ended everything else in between is Honestly, I, I don't know why I hold on to that. It's a digital clutter. So yes, you, I do too. You worked really hard over the past, what, few years. When did you get your start? When was that officially again? Okay, so I published the little, the short book in November mm -hmm. 2017. And then I published okay. my first novel, um, November 2018. Mm. Okay. okay, and... You obviously released quite a few uh, books since then. How were you able to keep up with that uh, pace? Because that's really good. There's a lot of authors out there that just sh struggle with <laughs> even putting out six books within their lifetime. See, and I feel like I'm right. I'm a really slow writer. I feel like I write really slowly um, because a lot of people, um, other author moms that I followed, uh, they they can publish like six books a year and I can't. I can't do that. That's just not, I can't do that. And it'd be worth anything. Um, especially after do that one mistake, that horrible mistake. I am uber careful with everything I release. Cause I'm like, I even plug in little, um, like I'll change two words in the first paragraph and the last paragraph 
and that's how I know that's the final when I read it. I'm like, okay, that word's there and that word's there. And then I'll go through it again. <laughs> cause yeah, cause I don't want to do that again. So I love, I love writing. Writing is something I've done as an escape since I was little. I mean, little, the first book I remember writing that had a beginning, middle and end was only like 10 pages long and I was nine. And it was really melodramatic and sad. Wow. <laughs> so I remember doing that when I was nine, but I, it is how I escape, but it's also how I am. Um, I don't know how to explain this. It's also how I draw community to me. I don't know, yeah. like, a, so I'll, I'll talk up my plots with my, my son and my daughter and my husband, and then I'll go talk to my mother and then I'll talk to, you know, my friends and we'll, I don't know. It's, it's how I share myself with people. My writing, I'm no character in my stories, but there are parts of me in all of them. So it's kind of how yeah. I slowly reveal myself to people. <laughs> how did you, you know, obviously I went through and I've read some of your content, um, you know, because we worked with Jeannie DeVita. Oh, right? she's such a saint, by the way. Let's just add that right she's there. Awesome. But I, I read some of your writing. So how did you get so good at your craft? <laughs> Um, practice, lots and lots of practice. Um, I'm always learning. So I don't stop learning. I don't want to lose my voice. So I have noticed that sometimes when I over edit, I will lose. I'm a very quirky, I would call myself writer. I'm not polished. My writing reads like you're talking to me. It's, it's who I am. So if okay. I'm reading my book and it doesn't feel like something I would say in conversation, then I've over edited and I have to go back and put myself back into it. Um, but I never stop learning. I keep watching YouTube channels about the craft. I keep watching, um, I keep reading books about the craft. So I've like a playlist I go to all the time. is like from Heart Breathings, Plot Your Novel that playlist I've watched so many times that I can even hit it on random and know what's what's happening. And I'll just listen to it. Is it her name, Sarah, too? Yeah, her name's Sarah Cannon. Yes. And um, yeah, that's I'm, what I thought. Yeah. Great channel. Yeah. And I'll listen to her and I know what she's going to say. And it just helps me get my thoughts in line. And then working with um, Jeannie was amazing. It gave me another tool on, on how to edit my books in a way I'd never thought of editing them before. And right now I'm so excited to apply it to the next books because I know it's going to make it even better. And um, so I just never stop learning books, YouTube channels, YouTube channels are my favorite because I can plug in my earbuds and I can set my phone up on my spice rack as I'm doing dishes and still consume all the content. Um, And then reading and listening to books endlessly, endlessly. I mean, that's what I was just doing with my daughter outside. We were listening to an audio book and that's just, kind of how we roll stories is how we roll at my house <laughs> when you got to work with Jeannie it was the very first time you'd worked with a professional editor because all those years you had been relying on Fiverr to get say uh, beta readers and proofreaders and such mm-hmm. but you never actually got an official editor no. so how did that compare working with Jeannie versus without her oh my goodness there's not there are not strong enough adjectives for how grateful I am for her insight and compassion to the writer's heart and to my story. Um, I think she would be proud of the final copy because I took what she told me and unlike my arrogant former self, I was like, yeah, I need this. Yeah, this is right. Yeah, she's here to help me. And even so my mom is one of my alpha readers. So even she, when I handed her the story again, she's like, I don't remember this part, but it makes it flow so much better. I don't remember this part, but it makes me like this character. And I'm like, that's because Jeannie told me to put it in. And she was absolutely 100% right. And it made it, it took my good story and made it magic. It was awesome. And I cannot imagine not working with an editor ever again (laughs) because it was magic. It's it's surprisingly uh, just kind of, you know, break off on a little bit of a tangent. When I reached out to Jeannie, uh, let's see here, it was late 2021. Uh, and she told me her rates and I'm not going to share the rates here because I'm sure it'll probably change and she does take a limited client load, right. but she is absurdly underpriced. And I even told her, I was just like, look, not that I want to pay you more money. I was like, I really, really appreciate <laughs> it. But I'm like, 
oh my gosh, you are so like, honestly, if, if you guys are ever interested, definitely reach out to Jeannie DeVita. She is fantastic at what she does. I mean, she's a UCLA creative writing instructor. So mm -hmm. I think she kind of knows what she's doing. And she's had numerous pieces featured on UCLA about her, which is absolutely stellar. But let's come back over to you for just a second here, because I really would love to just kind of figure out where is Sarah going next? What is your next, you know, steps? my next steps oh i have like i told you i have so many ideas written down i'm i am jumping into camp nanowrimo um that would be in july uh which might be a little bit anyway so i'm jumping into that and i'm trying to get the seventh penny nichols book written because the last one was amazing but it was a little bit emotionally heavy for a cozy and so i kind of want to relieve some of that pressure for my readers in the next one and I have been looking forward to writing this particular story since before I wrote book one. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't mm. wait to dive in and get going. So after that, I have a, a short planned. Um, that's a par paranormal penny short. And then I'm going to be writing on my honeypot mystery series. I need another book in that. I haven't released a book in that in two years. And I've been getting calls about that. I am going to get more audiobooks done. Like I told you, I have a huge list of stuff I'm going to do. And while I'm doing that, I want to walk my YouTube viewers mm -hmm. through it and my newsletter people through it and give them a behind the stage glance at what it looks like to be a writing mom who's a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you're crazy at all. But you know what is crazy is you brought up Honeypot Mysteries and mm -hmm. it got me to thinking you landed a book bub deal. Yes, I with did. the Honeypot Mysteries series. Mm -hmm. Share with me that process and what were the results on that? Because if I recall <coughs> 19,000 downloads in a day, um, something like that. <laughs> it was 22,000. Uh, <laughs> I'm way off. I missed 3,000 <laughs> downloads. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. So it was 19,000 right. on Amazon and about 3,000 on draft to digitals all their platforms. But it was amazing. So... Uh, I was relentless with BookBub. Every month I applied, every single month. If they didn't want it that month, then I, if they didn't want book one in that series, I would try book two. And if they didn't, I just, I actually had an alarm on my phone telling me, today's the day to do BookBub for this book. Today's the day to do BookBub for this book. And I did that, I think for a year before they accepted me. But I also got amazing covers done that... Um, they tell They're really more of nice, the story. The, way, the Honey Pop Mystery Series. Yeah. Thank you. I, I really like them. I was really impressed with them because that was one yeah. of my issues is I had Honey Pot published and I was marketing it as a cozy mystery. And I thought it was because it's small town, mm -hmm. but they deal with too many real life issues and that knocks it into okay. suspense. So um, I had to get covers that mm -hmm. match that feeling. And once I did, um, it was two months, two months of asking BookBub and they took it and I marked it down for free, wow. which is not something I'd ever done for that book before, which helped it launch. Yeah. And yeah, 22,000 downloads. It blew my mind, blew my mind. But the next two months of, I mean, I don't want to sound snotty, but revenue from that was mind boggling to me. I was like, oh my goodness, people actually like this book. I'm so happy they like it. And I'm like, okay, good. So it was great. It was great to see them reading through and to be getting emails about the stories. I love getting emails about my stories. I love it when they tell me things like, hey, Kat reminds me of this chick I know in homeschool co-op. She's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, I know a girl like that too. <laughs> so that was, that uh, this was amazing. This is really, really cool. Yeah, I, I think that's really incredible. Uh, and it, it's it's funny because I remember when you first came to consult with me and you were kind of a Rubik's Cube to us and the team just were looking at this and we're like, we, we know she's got a problem here, but I'm like looking at your covers and even yeah. the covers that we ended up quote unquote rescuing, those were fine too. Um, but I just knew, I told you that with Honey Pop Mystery Series, I was like, no, we're not touching those. I was like, those look really good. I was like, unless we absolutely have to, let's not do it. And I'm so glad we didn't because you ended up launching that BookBub deal shortly after we got connected and mm -hmm. it just took off really big. And of course, you're saying that there was great read through in the series. So yes, amazing, mm, even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, right. 
as we start to wrap up the podcast, I always just toss this last question out to the guests. And I think you're a great motivation and inspiration to every author that's going to be tuning in. So I would love to get one tip from you that you haven't already shared for any aspiring authors and self-publishers. My main tip from experience and ongoing experience is to remain patient in your perseverance. Keep trying. Don't give up. I saw a tweet today just this morning saying, why am I writing book three for this series when book one hasn't sold? I'm like, you're writing book three because book one is going to sell and they're going to want book three. And you need to keep going. So a lot of the times series don't even get seen until you've got five books out. They don't even get noticed until you've got five books out. And another you know, part of being patient and keeping your perseverance high is remembering why you write. I write because I love it. And yes, I want to support my family with this. I'm not going to be one of those people who just say, oh, I write because it just feels good. It's hard. Writing is hard. It's hard work. And uh, it's not always easy to stay hopeful and be patient and keep persevering. There are many, many times like before Book Rescue, I was almost... I was almost at my wits end. I was just going to give up. I I would keep writing. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep writing. And I'm just going to give it to my family because I'm never going to stop writing. But obviously the world doesn't want what I'm selling. And um, many, many, many days of crying over that and then going, not all at one time. <laughs> and then going, you know what? Who cares? I like what I write. My family likes what I write. I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm just going to keep going because someday, someday it's going to click. And, you know, maybe I won't even be alive to see it, but my kids will be and it will help them. So I'm just going to keep going. So patience and perseverance. Don't, don't give up, but also be, do it all. (laughs) Special thanks to Sarah for taking some time out her day to spend some time with us folks. Of course, help support indie authors just like Sarah Walday. Go on over to Amazon. Look up Sarah Walday. Last name spelled H-U-A-L-D-E. Sarah Walday. That's S-A-R-A-H. And uh, pick up a copy of her book if you're into cozy paranormal mystery books. Uh, actually, it's paranormal cozy mystery. But, uh, you know, we're splitting hairs at this point. Hopefully you enjoyed this week's interview. Make sure you come back next week for another exciting interview. I will see you then.